Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about craniometric points. Now, craniometric points for descriptive purpose, they are studied along the midline and along the side of the skull. So let's see first the craniometric points found along the midline of the skull. Now we will discuss these points from before backward, from below upward. So lowermost point in the midline, right? This is the base of the mandible, and in the midline, the lowermost point along the base is termed as nathion. Now next to it, in the chin, the most anterior point along the mandible over here, which is forming the prominence of the chin over here in the midline, this point is termed as pogonian. Now if we see the upper jaw in the midline between two central incisors, right, this lowest point in the upper jaw, this is termed as prosthean. Now about to that in the midline, this is termed as anterior nasal spine or it is also termed as acanthian right in the midline now this is piriform aperture of the nose and its upper part is bounded by two nasal bones right and between them is internasal suture so the lowermost point in the midline lowermost point of the internasal suture is termed as rhinian now above this nasal bones fuse with the frontal bone to form frontonasal suture and in the midline is the internasal suture so the meeting point of internasal suture and frontonasal suture is termed as nasion now in the forehead in the frontal bone above the orbital margin there are two superciliary arches and imaginary meeting point of two superciliary arches somewhere over here is termed as glabella now behind the frontal bone is joined with parietal bone by coronal suture and both these parietal bones are joined with each other by sagittal suture so meeting point of sagittal suture with coronal suture in the midline this point is termed as bragma this is a site of anterior fontanelle right now here is a nasion and this point is termed as bragma right so if we draw an imaginary cord joining nasion to the bragma right now in this cord the frontal bone if you see from the side forms maximum protuberance over here somewhere right so maximum protuberance along the cord from nasion to bragma along the frontal bone this point is termed as metopion now if you see the vault of the skull from the side the midline point which shows maximum convexity this point is termed as vertex right it is situated few centimeter behind the bragma now in the posterior part of the sagittal suture generally <clears throat> it shows two parietal foramina which are not clearly visible over here but somewhere over here you will get two parietal foramina and a portion of sagittal suture between these two parietal foramina is termed as obelion right behind the obelion the meeting point of sagittal suture with this two lambdoid suture the lambdoid suture are the suture lines between squamous occipital bone and parietal bone so the meeting point of these three is termed as lambda which is a site of posterior fontanelle now again if you see the skull from the side in the occipital bone most prominent point is termed as opisthocranian now this point is considered to take anteroposterior diameter with glabella so a distance measured from glabella to the opisthocranian will give anteroposterior diameter of the skull now if you see the skull from behind and below there is a prominent part right this is termed as external occipital protuberance and summit of external occipital protuberance is termed as inion below in the skull this is foramen magnum and the midpoint found along the posterior margin of foramen magnum this point is termed as opisthean similarly the midpoint found along the anterior margin of foramen magnum is termed as basion now if you measure a distance from basion to the bragma right will give height of the skull now still in front in the base of the skull if you see this bony bar this is a bony bar formed by fusion of body of sphenoid in front and basilar part of occipital bone behind right so in developing skull there runs a suture between these two separating these two and if you imagine a meeting point with the midline right meeting point of suture with the midline this point is termed as sphenobasion 
Now over here you can see the midline bone is termed as woomer, right? And its most posterior part in the midline, this point is termed as hormion. Still in front, this is hard palate and most posterior prominent part in the midline of hard palate is termed as staphylion. Now in front of that, this is hard palate and this is its suture, right? So just imagine a midpoint with the posterior surfaces of two central incisors, right? These two are the central incisors and their posterior surface is meeting in the midline. This point is termed as oval. So these are the craniometric points related to the midline of the skull. Let's see the craniometric points along the side of the skull. Now along the side of the skull in the temporal region, there is an area which shows fusion of four bones. This is termed as sterion, right? So frontal bone, squamous part of the parietal bone, squamous part of the temporal bone and greater wing of sphenoid. They fuse to form this terion. Now it is a site of anterolateral fontanelle. Similarly, posteriorly, there is a region which is showing line of fusion of three bones. The temporal bone, parietal bone and squamous part of the occipital bone. This is termed as asterion. Now if you see this zygomatic arch from below, right, it has got two roots, anterior root and this is posterior root. Now along the posterior root, when it forms upper margin of external acoustic meatus, over here you can see the midpoint along the upper margin of external acoustic meatus, right, on the posterior root of zygoma, this point is termed as porion. Now along the zygomatic arch on its lateral surface, a point which shows maximum convexity of zygomatic arch somewhere over here this point is termed as zygion now if you see the zygomatic arch from the side the upper border right when it reaches to the zygomatic bone right over here there forms a notch which is showing the bifurcation of upper frontal process and posterior temporal process right so a point in the notch, in the depth of the notch, this point is termed as jugal or jugal point. Now over here, this is lacrimal bone, which is related in front with the frontal process of maxilla and above with the frontal bone. So a meeting point of these three bones, over here you can see frontal bone, the maxilla and lacrimal bone. This meeting point is termed as decrian. Now this is mastoid process, right? And most inferior point or most projecting point along the mastoid process is termed as mastoidal. Now along the side of the skull, at right angle to the midline, a point where we get maximum cranial breadth, right? Over here, this point is termed as urian. Now along the mandible, this is the angle of mandible and most prominent point at the angle of mandible over here this is termed as gonion now we know mandible has got two processes in front is a coronoid process behind is a condyloid process so at the tip of this coronoid process this point is termed as coronion and behind is a condyloid process if you see the condyloid process from behind it has got a medial most and lateral most prominent points Right. So the medial most prominent point along the condylar process is termed as condylion medial and lateral most point is termed as condylion lateral. So this is regarding craniometric points found along the side of the skull. Hope you have understood well. Thanks for watching.